Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me today and also wanted to say thank you Maxon for organizing this event uh, during this weird time when we all so separated uh, to give us this ability to connect and uh, to share some knowledge and inspiration. So a couple of words about myself. My name is Sasha Vinagradova. I'm an art director at the Mila Lay. You can find some of my work here. Uh, as you maybe know, Mil specializes in video production, motion graphics. We do lots of advertising, um, some titles for movies and TV shows, graphic for movies, uh, music videos, AR, VR experience, and lots of lots of things. So I uh, wanted to share my reel with you. And um, uh, I'm just going to scroll through some work while I'm talking. I started working in 3D almost 13 years ago. Um, I do motion graphic for the last four years. Uh, also, uh, there was an extended period of time where uh, when I was working mostly in uh, key art, um, did uh, lots of uh, posters for movies and TV shows. Um, also do some book covers um, and in most of my work I really like to combine 2D and 3D I think it gives you an awesome opportunity uh, to get the best result in sometimes shortest period of time uh, one of my latest projects is the short film uh, called Forest if you don't mind I'll I'll share with you that one too. I just wanted to say that um, this uh, short film had to premiere uh, in a festival called Monster in Portugal, but unfortunately that um, animation festival got cancelled because of the coronavirus. So that is sort of a little premiere. So I hope you will like it.
So yeah, I um, wanted to really thank all the people who helped me to work on it and um, all my beautiful Milka workers and Neil who helped to color it. So thank you very much. Um, so let's jump into today's project. Um, I called it uh, Creating a Surreal Portrait uh, Lily of the Valley. And uh, that's uh, what we're going to do today. Um, as I said earlier, uh, I, um, I came from a 2D background uh, and um, I really like combining 2D and 3D. I think it sometimes gives you an awesome result uh, in a relevantly short period of time. And especially with the uh, uh, things like portraits, it's really, really hard to create a realistic 3D portrait, uh, but sometimes it's just easier to take a beautiful photograph and uh, it will have all the mm, life uh, and sometimes it's going to be just more impact impactful. So um, let's uh, talk about the project. Um, so workflow. Possibly this workflow is uh, nothing new to you, but just to structure the presentation, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So as uh, any good project, you want to start with a sketch. Uh, I knew that I uh, was going uh, with a portrait, so I first found a stock image I like, I bought it, and uh, then I made a little sketch. Uh, I really like uh, a nature theme, so um, and also I already had a material library uh, with some mega scans, some projects, some uh, models I done previously. Also, I wanted to show you guys uh, my technique uh, on how to plant moss, so I thought it would be nice to create this kind of look that nature is almost. Uh, bursting from uh, out from inside to outside um, so that was the sketch then uh, I jumped into ZBrush where we're going to sculpt a rough uh, a rough sculpt of our uh, portrait then we're going to bring that sculpt into uh, cinema and camera project our texture on that sculpt uh, then we're going to set up our models, we're going to bring some existing models, going to model some new models, then we're going to set up material uh, and lighting, uh, that's going to be redshift, and uh, then I'm not going to talk much about animation, but final render, um, some setup of the depth of field, and uh, uh, that's pretty much going to be uh, the final result, which, again, is here. So uh, let's jump into ZBrush sculpting. So let's talk about a couple highlights um, how you can uh, sculpt something like this in ZBrush. I'm not going to go through it in all the details, uh, just highlights. Uh, pretty much I really like using this function see-through. You can put your uh, photo underneath it and match your geometry. In this case I didn't want to sculpt things from the ground zero uh, so I used some of the existing uh, tools in ZBrush. If you uh, look here I used uh, Julie for the body and then from projects I used demo head female and um, I pretty much combined those two uh, I tried to match angle a little bit. I use this function here in document zap, uh, zap link properties to store my view so I can always come back to it. Then very important function is uh, draw cameras so you can store your camera and later on when you're done with sculpting you have it with that happy with that, you can export it through FBX uh, Export Import. So uh, 
you can use it here, export cameras. Obviously, uh, I used lots of uh, dyno meshing and zero meshing uh, to combine it into one shape. And in the end, in order to have lighter geometry, I used uh, decimation master pretty much to triangul triangulate my model and to have a lighter final model. Uh, I'm going to turn on uh, fast forward uh, of my process so you can see uh, how I built that particular sculpt. And here I skip to my final result. So after you're done uh, sculpting uh, your portrait in ZBrush, you can bring it into uh, into Cinema by File, Merge, and uh, your FBX. It already will have a camera. So now uh, we would need to project our texture into our geometry. So let's create background. And let's create material, C4D material, apply to that background and uh, bring our image, stock image. Let's match the size of the render and document. Um, I actually already did match it. Uh, make sure it matches the photo you picked. So from here, I would match background in an exact way. Uh, I need uh, things to be transparent, so I'm turning on X-ray. And without rotating camera, I'm just matching, matching the size. I'm trying mostly to align nose and eyes. Cool. So now when everything is, ali is aligned, I can do my projections. It doesn't work straight away with the redshift material. You need to use uh, Cinema 4D material to create projections. For that, uh, you can apply that background material onto your geometry then click on material and change projection method to a camera mapping from there you can bring the camera and uh, you can see it but it does not align a little bit because our uh, ratio is not right I need to change it to custom and calculate. So now it looks right and in order to bake it so it would not change I right click on material and click generate UV coordinates. So now it does not depend on a camera anymore it, it is just our uh, UVs. Let's do the same for the hair use our material, apply material, then change in projection method, method to uh, camera mapping, bring our camera, change, cost, uh, change uh, film aspect to custom, click calculate, right click on the material and click generate UV coordinates. So now I want to check how it looks, and for that I actually want to create a uh, redshift material. And apply it to both portrait and the hair. Then open material, bring our texture. connected to surface and I'm going to change uh, my um, layout to retro layout 
and turn on IPR. Cool, so um, our regional uh, resolution was huge. I just want to lock it and change it to something smaller. And uh, in here, I'm, I'm going to duplicate the camera, not to lose it. I'm going to lock it uh, and with the C4D tags. Okay. Um, and in here, let's try to rotate and see. So yeah, that's how you would do 3D projection. Pretty cool. Okay, so from here, I'm going to jump into one of the files I uh, did earlier. I'm going to do it a couple times through the whole process. So next step would be to uh, break the shape. Uh, before I started uh, this model, I uh, actually had a very rough sketch, which uh, looked like this. So I knew I wanted to split her face in pieces and uh, add some uh, greenery sticking out. For that, I uh, created a Voronoi Fracture, which you can find in uh, here, Voronoi Fracture, and put it, um, put my head inside of it. Okay, uh, in here, let me pause my IPR. Um, you can see that uh, if you go to source point generator. I did exponential and uh, those settings, and then an object. I have set it fragments, fragments just a little bit to have the space between them. I clicked on whole object and uh, added a slight thickness thickness to my objects, so you can see that uh, they are not just thin plates, but there is some geometry. Uh, another important thing is to go to Voronoi selections and check inside faces and outside faces. So we can apply different materials on inside and outside. Uh, as you can see, I used my previous material and I grabbed a selection from here for outside faces and I created just regular, regular redshift material and um, apply it to inside faces. From here everything got kind of heavy. Um, my home machine is not extremely powerful, so um, I just collapsed everything. From here I deleted some of the faces which I didn't need it to use. and uh, also adjusted some pieces of her face to make some space between them that uh, some plants are going to grow through. One thing which uh, was bothering me that uh, inside that inside faces uh, had the same material as outside, and uh, I needed them to have the same material as those uh, sides. I couldn't find a better solution than just do it by hand. If you know better solution please let me know I'll just show you how I did it again not ideal but that's what it is mm. I would select my piece then go to inside face selection 
and then with UF, which is field selection, and with shift, add inside face I need, and go to select, set selection. So if you see, now it's the correct material. I had to repeat it with every piece, which was a little tedious. And again, let, let's do it again just so you can remember. Um, I select it. The part I needed, then selected the inside faces selection. UF, shift, and select, and set selection. So, so it's correct. Cool. Uh, because I don't want to do that again, I'll just going to switch to the next file where it's uh, ready to go. So here, all the selections already finished, um, and I would like to. Uh, bring some uh, plants and set up materials and scene for this. So for the plants I got this Megascan model of Lady of the Valley uh, plant but it, as you can see it doesn't have actual flowers and I really wanted to have flowers. So I decided just to model those separately uh, and uh, use texture from other Megascan model, from this one. Uh, so let's uh, look into how to model flower for this. Okay, so I got some references of uh, the flowers I wanted to uh, build. I hope you will just remember them. I'm going to keep it on my second screen. Let's build it. Let's create new project. Uh, create plane. Polygon, polygon, not plane. Um, and uh, change the size to one and one to make it a little bit more closer to a real world size. And collapse it, see. So this is the base for my petal. I'm going to move my pivot point to the center and I'm going to create cloner put my polygon inside of the cloner change it to linear to radial because um, there are six petals and to change count to six and radius to zero cool so this is the future future flower From here I'm going to uh, point selection, selecting both points with shift, with the scale bring them closer. Uh, with space I'm switching between uh, two tools I used recently. I'm going to switch to edge selection. And from here, with holding shift, I can extrude, I can extrude my uh, edges. Also, with uh, W, I can switch my uh, co coordinates from world to local. So in this case I want world again with the shift extruding okay then um, you 
B changes, uh, selects this row of polygon polygons. M M cuts it in half. Cool, I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to put it with Alt inside of the turbo smooth with subdivision surface. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, maybe to change things a little bit. Cool. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Maybe all oh, frames it. Uh, maybe. Um, Open it up a little bit more. Cool. Now I'm going to switch back and forth uh, with my UVs and uh, regular uh, interface. Let's add some UVs to this pedal. I'm going to UV edit. I'm going to bring this uh, texture, new tech, no, not new texture, file, open texture, and uh, we're going to bring this texture. So, as you can see, it has nice petal. It doesn't m match our shape, but it matches our general look. So, I'm going to select all my polygons. Uh, I'm going to face it towards camera. I'm going to projection, projection and click frontal and uh, relax. And now when I'm going to bring my previous texture, I can match it. So, I just need to place it where I need it. With space, I'm switching between tools. The flowers are really tiny, so I think it's fine if it's uh, not ideal, but good enough. And so now I'm switching back to my standard. So petals are done. Let's uh, model. Let's model inside of the flower, those little uh, tones and this central part. For that again, I create polygon, change the scale of this polygon, I'm going to hide my flower, with C collapse it, bring my pivot point to the center with a scale change the shape of it leave pivot uh, pivot mode and uh, O O frames it come on frame it frame it doesn't frame it for some reason and uh, from here, let's adjust the shape of it to look again approximately like this. It's thinner in the beginning and in the end. And then I'm going to do the same 
UB, select my ring selection, MM to uh, split it apart. One more time, MM splits it more. Uh, and then I'm going to extrude, not extrude, but move those ribs a little bit. Cool. And uh, now I'm just going to duplicate the same cloner, remove my previous polygon, put it inside of this cloner. Uh, let's unhide the flower. Cool, so I want to adjust flower a little bit. Not. Let's change it to fix clone position so we can adjust it. Cool. Close enough. In and then I'm going to place it again into inside of my subdivision surface. But for now, let's create UVs. Again, let's go to uh, to UV edit. Select our our model. Place it facing the camera. Go into projection, frontal. Relax, file, open texture, and um, let's place it in here where we have this nice transition from white to yellow. I think it's a pretty cool spot. Rotating at 90 degrees, which is a little slow. Placing it and scaling it. Cool. Again, going back to our standard UV U, UI. This is good. And now let's create the middle part, which I create from disk. Again, small radius, one six polygons is good. I collapse it with C. Here I'm going to move this point with KL create an edge. Double click on edge selects the edge. Changing the shape, MS creates a little bit of bevel. Just in more shapes, maybe a couple more bevels if you would like. So yeah. This looks this looks good to me. And same deal. Let's go to UV interface. In here I'm selecting all my polygons. I would like to uh, reverse my normals because they're flipped right now. Uh, place it to the camera for projection. Go to projection, frontal. And again, file, open texture. So I need this gradient from white to yellow, which we have an approximately same place. So let's 
place it there. Rotating it. going back to the standard. From here let's jump into the file I already built. Uh, that's how the final flower looks. If you as you can see I uh, added those steams here. They've been built with a sweep in the same way I placed them where I needed to be on the texture. I didn't want to collapse this sweep because I wanted to have ability to control it if I need to. And uh, the little leaves, same deal. So those are flowers, they're ready to go. And uh, in the files, I opened mega scans. So I took just one part of it. I usually select it with double click. UP separates it. I deleted everything else. Took our flower, brought it to our scene, and everything a little bit bigger, the flower a little bit bigger. One thing about this flower wanted to change pivot so it matches the beginning of this team so it's a little easier to place and control okay let's place it in the middle of the plant okay and uh, let's bring this into our scene. I'm going to open my final file, uh, switch my UI on Redshift, and uh, here let's uh, talk about setting up the scene. So first of all we need some lighting and um, if I change this into the clay mode you can see that the lighting I set up kind of matches the lighting of uh, the image. We have one uh, soft area light um, coming from the top corner, which is this light. Let me change my render to a camera to this camera so I can rotate and uh, still see in the same image. I'm also going to hide all those cameras. Cool. So see I have this uh, soft box uh, area light. Then I have dome light. Uh, without it shadows are a little too dark and you never want to have such a black shadows uh, and also I have a little bit of point light coming from inside otherwise um, it again look too dark and uh, unnatural so this was my lighting and let's talk about materials so first of all I switched my uh, material on the girl herself from just flat to a, 
uh, Redshift Met Shadow Catcher. That uh, this node allows you uh, to mimic shadows on um, flat images. So pretty much, I grabbed the texture we used earlier for uh, for the girl and fed it into background in my uh, matte shadow catcher. And that's where those shadows coming from. So if we would connect it straight, no shadows with shadow catchers, there are shadows, which is super, super cool. Um, and I use the same shadow catcher material on my planes for the background, um, which I just painted in Photoshop. And uh, now let's look into our plant materials. So it's very simple setup. I just took uh, textures from uh, from mega scans. Uh, fed uh, albedo into diffuse color texture. Disregarded this one. I didn't change anything. I played with it a little bit, but uh, then just default was better. Uh, the refraction, mm, the translucency uh, texture goes into refraction. And uh, w one thing you need to do is to uh, mark uh, thin walled and uh, my weight of the refraction is 0.5. Uh, for some reason, this model didn't have uh, roughness, but it had glossiness, which is fine. You just need to invert it and you'll get roughness. Make sure you have uh, gamma 1, because it should be in linear, because it's black and white map. Um, then I um, used this placement in my uh, bump map. It's not really right, but uh, I thought it looked good enough. And uh, for the flowers, I used pretty much the same, uh, the same material, the different textures. I just didn't, uh, I just really didn't use uh, opacity for this because I didn't need to. Also, as you can see, I added some little grasses from uh, another Megascan model um, and that is pretty much it that's uh, how this uh, scene was set up pretty simple one thing I wanted to add to it was uh, was uh, some moss and hair so uh, as you can see here I have a little flyaway hair which uh, pretty much just a bunch of splines with a, a hair uh, simulation on it and on hair I turned on wave just a little bit and uh, let's look into how I set up the moss so if you ever try to google it uh, there is this awesome tutorial which uh, tells you uh, how to make moss. I pretty much use the same uh, the same uh, method. It just I didn't use ZBrush for it. Let me start with new project. Save project as uh, moss zero two. And uh, first of all, I'm going to top, Alt-V brings me to this view, out to the back, and in back I'm going to place this, uh, the moss texture from, uh, from Megascans. So texture, and uh, this one. In that tutorial, uh, the way they do that, they do it in ZBrush. I prefer uh, I prefer doing it in Cinema. So same deal. I'm just going to uh, create a polygon, and then 
place it where I need it, hit C, and uh, there's an awesome tool called ME Polygon Pen, and pretty much I'm just doing very very rough polygon pen modeling. Um, and uh, you don't need to do it for uh, every moss. Like if you want to have more variations, you are welcome to. Uh, I did just a couple and it was good enough. Uh, and here I'm just sort of uh, doing like an uh, overview how I did it, so it's not as detailed. But yeah, using Polygon Pen, pretty much. With Control, I extrude those uh, uh, edges. With Control, I can delete it. And I'll just show it on example of those five. A uh, very important part of it is to have to match your corners of the texture. So if you match it here and then you bring your texture later on it will it will just stick in right place so I merge everything connect objects and delete and then from here I'm uh, I'm bringing my material material I'm bringing that texture of the moss and uh, I'm changing it to flat making sure that it sits in the right plane and this is the magical button fit to object so you can see it's not aligned because it's just not the right not the right uh, angle so you just need to find that right angle. At some point you will. Oh, here it got it aligned, so perfect. And from here I'm doing generate UV coordinates. So now those polygons know that they belong in the right spot. Uh, I can delete my corners. then I can separate those in groups so now it's just separate polygons um, one thing you would need to do is to uh, place axis the pivots in the right spot And from here you want to make them look not as regular, so not as plain. And you can use uh, soft selection if you want to. Pretty much to add some dimension to it. center actually here and if you place this into the cloner 
that would be your moss. In my case I already had moss from the other project. If you take a look, it's just a uh, lost yep so here is just a bunch of moss parts I uh, try to keep it low poly uh, just because it's already heavy with uh, so many instances so I'm going to um, bring this moss into the scene and um, I want to place it on the model and I want to place it in very particular places. In order to control it I'm going to use uh, a vertex map. Uh, for that I'm going to merge everything And uh, because it came from a Voronoi fracture, it already has some. It already has some of the vertex maps. And the only thing we need to do really here is uh, to paint where we want it. So uh, as you can see, I can just paint over it and. Uh, There are different uh, brushes. So I don't want to have too much on her face. It's more about like ages. So I'm going to remove I'm going to remove it from some places. I also can smooth it out if I want to. And then when I'm going to uh, I'm going to show how to apply it. So how our clone are ready and um, change its settings to object. Uh, change it instance mode to multi instance and uh, put our object inside of it. I don't want to place too many instances right now, so I can just show you. Otherwise, it's a little too heavy. I usually boost up the number just for the final renders. So as you can see here, cloners are everywhere. Let's use Let's use uh, our da -da -da shader and uh, in shader change scale to minus one and in fall off let's uh, place our our um, vertex map into the into the fell off. Uh, we can make our moss just a little bit bigger. So in this way we can control where we will have our our cloners. Cool. So uh, if we come back to our final file which was file 11 and um, uh, here is the final scene I already uh, added moss in here uh, it turned out pretty subtle but I actually like that it's so subtle uh, and the only thing which is really left to do is to add some depth of field to your scene because it really helps to blend 
2D and 3D together. Uh, here's actually how it looks with no depth of field, which looks fine too, but it just adds this nice final touch in the end. So yeah, we just need to click on override, enable, uh, boost up amount of depth of field. Um, I like keeping my aspect. This 0.66 means that it's pretty much like an anamorphic looking bokeh. Mm, or bokeh, I'm not sure how to say that right. Also I applied uh, this image which creates this nice uh, color aberration effect. Th th that is actually something I followed from Grayscale Gorillas tutorial. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can set up settings, you can optimize your render for the settings and uh, animate your camera and um, you are ready to go. And here I just wanted to show you a final result. Some of the different angles, a little bit of camera mo movement. And uh, also wanted to show you the final comped image with a little love from Photoshop. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you again for watching. Uh, again, my name is Sasha Nagradova and you can find my work in here. I hope you liked it.